All right, if we look at this problem, the first thing you need is a graphing calculator since it's problem number two. The question states you have f and g. They're defined by these two functions. And you have um, let r and s, right here, r and s, are the areas bounded by f and g. The first question is find the sum of the areas of r and s. So we must find the r area of this and this and take the sum of them. So they actually make you do a little bit more work here. So let's start with finding the area of r. To find the area right here, what we need to do is we need to make an integral from 0 to wherever that is. To find the area of s, we need to make the integral from this point to 2, because 2 is the farthest over value, x value. So let's start with r. How do we get the area of that? Well, we have to get that intersection. So to get that intersection, what do we do? Well, we simply type it in our calculator. All righty, when we type it in our calculator, when we use the functions of our calculator to find the intersection, I'm going to call the intersection A, B. All right, my intersection is, I'm going to call it A, B. So A, if you do in your calculator, you should get 1.032832, comma, 2.4, 0, 1, 1, 0, 8. Now you might say, why did I put such a big number? Because this is an intermediate value. You need more than three decimal places. All right. If this was um, an end result, you only need three decimal places. But since it's intermediate, you need more than three decimal places. So this coordinate in green, okay, let's make it blue to match the blue coordinate, is right here, which kind of makes sense. If you think about this, if this is 0 to 2, that looks about 1 over. And if this is from um, 0 to 4, it looks about 2.4. So that actually is somewhat good graph. All right, so why did that help again? Well, we need the interval to set up our integral, and we're going to add them up. So the area of R. Okay, the area of R, the area of R is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to the a value. What is a? It's this right here. That's the a value because we went from here to 1.032832. All right, now I need to find area. So you need to use the top function minus the bottom function, the bigger area minus the smaller area. So I went from the x-axis, the highest top, the highest point, the highest function, minus the lower function. Now, here's the problem. How do you know which one's which from this picture? Well, on your graphing calculator, you can look at it. You can see it. So just look at your graphing calculator carefully. But if you, you're still struggling a little bit, or you want a quick way to know is, well, see this x to the fourth? x to the fourth look like that. So there's a big bet that g, this is going to be g, and this other function is going to be f. All right, and it is if you use a graphing calculator to see that. And you are allowed a graphing calculator, so check that. Okay, so we are now going to take the larger length, which is going to be this height, minus the shorter length, which is going to be this height. All right, that's how you find area. The larger area minus the smaller area, or the, the top height minus the bottom height. So what is my bigger value, g or f, and you should be able to see that it is g. So I'm going to take g of x minus, oops, let me finish that parenthesis, so g of x minus the lower one, which is f of x, on the interval of dx. Not interval dx, but g of x minus f of x dx on the interval 0 to a. That would be my area for r. Now, what would be my area for s? It would be very similar, my area for s, except for this one, I'm going from 1.032 to 2. And on this one, we have to think through again, what's your high and your low? Well, what's your highest top point? And what's your lower function? And you got to be very careful here, because if you notice, f is now on top, g is now on bottom. So the interval again was from a, but this time to 2. 
And my top function, again, we notice, is f of x. My bottom function is g of x dx. So, again, f is your top, g is your bottom, and those are the two area functions. Now, your calculator might have a feature that can find the area, just put, hit, it, hit the button, and it does the area between two curves. Some calculators do that. Some you have to set it up with these two functions, type it all in, and it takes a lot of work, so be careful typing in your calculator. Be very careful typing it in your calculator. Okay, but you're basically going to answer these two things and add them up, which when you do that, the answer to R, you should get when you put it in your calculator, R is going to be 0.997427, and the area of S, you should get 1.006919. When you add those together, you should get 2.004. And that would be your area. And then here is where you only need three decimal places. All the intermediate numbers, you need more than three decimal places to hold the integrity of your result. So this right here is the answer to A. That was a lot of work for one, especially all the number crunching you have to do with your calculator, it's not number crunching, with all the typing, because these are the kind of long equations, so again, you have to find intersections, you have to set up two integrals, you have to add them up, and that is the process for finding area. Always remember, area is the top function minus the bottom function, or the which would be the bigger area minus the smaller area, if you think of it that way. Alrighty, for the second problem, you want to find the region S. Um, sorry, not to find. The region S is, ba um, is the base of a solid with the cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Find the volume of the solid. So we're focusing on S here, and we're going perpendicular to the cross-sections. So that means we're finding perpendicular to the x-axis, so that is the base of square cross-sections. So again, when you do perpendicular cross-sections, it's got to be perpendicular to the x-axis. So this line is going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. And that is the base with squares coming off your screen. So it's kind of hard to visualize that. But to do perpendicular cross-sections, what we're going to do here is we need to find areas of squares. All right, we have a square here. And that square, the base, is going to be this length right here. So the height will be the same. So it's going to be a square sitting right here coming straight off the page. This base matches this length. And so the height would be the same. So how do we find that base, that length? Well, you should know from the previous problem, it relates. Because to find that length, aren't you going to take the higher length minus the lower length? Okay, so what is this top function? Again, if you look carefully, you got f. Isn't f the top and g the bottom? So to find that length right there, aren't you going to take f minus g? So what is this lower part? It's going to be f of x minus g of x. That will give you the length of the bottom of your square. So if this is a square, what's the height going to be? The same thing. So the height is also going to be f of x minus g of x. So let's say that one more time. How do I know the base of this square right here is f of x minus g of x? Because the long length is f minus the shorter length, which is g. If you want to see it this way, the long length is f, the shorter length is is g, so this is what we're looking for right there. And the base and the height are the same. So what is the area formula for this? The area of that square, the area is f of x minus g of, minus g of x times itself, which is squared. So if the area is f of x minus g of x squared, 
Okay. What we're going to do here is now the integral is going to sum up the squares across here. So we got squares and the integral sum them up all along here. So remember, this would be a very small square. This here would be a very big square. And as you get closer and closer to the side, they get skinnier and smaller and smaller squares. So these are really hard to visualize. So how would you set this up? Well, the volume is going to be the integral, again, from A to 2. Because you're going from A here, which is this coordinate right here. That starts from here, which is that number, A, to 2, which is the end of the interval. And your area function goes right here. You always put your function of your area right there. And it's going to be dx because it's perpendicular to the x-axis. And my area function was f of x minus g of x. And so that right there would be the, um, the equation, that the integral, definite integral that creates the volume value. And what would that be if you stick it in your calculator and let it pop out an answer? You would get 1.283 is what you should get when you stick this in your calculator using these functions down there. Remember, perpendicular to the x-axis means this way. If it was perpendicular to the y-axis, it would be that way. Squares, well, this is the base of your square. That's how you get the base. And area of a square is base times height. And so that area function is always the inside. All perpendicular cross-section, the area that you're looking for goes right there. And the interval goes perpendicular to it. Most of the time, C's tend to be harder than A and B. But in this one, it might be hard to read, but it's actually a fairly simple question when you think it through. Let H be a vertical distance between graphs F and G. So H in region S, sorry. So in this region, it's saying that H is the vertical distance from here to here, which isn't that what we used for the perpendicular cross-section here? So if you understand that length we got last time, and they're calling that length H. So they're calling that H. And we just did that in the previous problem with the square perpendicular cross-sections in S. Kind of nice. We got that piece. So that's H. Now find the rate of H, find the rate at which H changes in respects to X when X is 1.8. So what that is basically saying is it wants h prime of 1.8. So it wants the rate of change of h at 1.8. So how do you take the derivative of h? Well, we first have to write h as a function. And as we talked about that last problem, isn't h really going to be that length? minus that length, won't that give us the length inside here of h? And so what is the green line? It was f. What is the red dotted line? It is g. So what we have to understand here is h of x is really just f of x minus g of x. Okay. So what's the derivative of h of x? The derivative of h of x is just going to be f prime x minus g prime x. OK, so what is h prime 1.8? Well, that would just be f prime 1.8 plus g prime 1.8. So. How do we get the answer? Well, we are simply going to use our calculator for this function, find the derivative at 1.8, which is using your calculator, we'll give it to you. Then we're going to use a calculator to find g prime 1.8, add them together, and we are done. Actually, as you notice, where did I get an add from? You notice, hopefully, that that should not be an add, that should be a minus. I do not know where I got add from. so. What we didn't do, we're going to subtract the two. I don't know where I got that from. That's weird. Minus, minus, add. No, I uh, messed up. So we're going to minus the two. There we go. So our answer is going to be, when we plug it in our calculator, 
And if we crunch it through, you should get negative 3.812 or 811. It could be either one, but that would be your answer. Again, it's not as hard as long as you understand what this vertical distance meant and what the rate of change meant. That could have been tricky, but if you look at this, once you understand that, it's not as bad as it might look to start with.